I'm Kate Mowbray. I'm a naturalist at Sandy Creek Nature Center, and today I'm here with my friends from the Upper Oconee Watershed Network, or UOM, and we're going to show you how and why to sample a stream. So we're going to take a look at a couple of areas to see different habitats, and we're going to take a couple of different samples to give you a close look at some of the critters that live here in our water. All right, so our first sample that we're going to take today, we are using a net called a kick stain and it collects an area about two feet wide and we're gonna have people go in front about two feet forward so we get four square feet of sample area and we're gonna do kind of the creek boogie. So we're gonna <laughs> move our feet and kind of do a twist and try to loosen up any animals that may be living on the bottom, whether it's on the rocks. And some of the rocks are too big to kick up so we're gonna use our hands to kind of clean those. So our volunteers here are gonna demonstrate how to do the creek boogie. Go ahead, Jackie, do the creek boogie for us. So while Jackie's kicking her feet, the other volunteers are holding the net at an angle so that they can collect anything to keep it from washing downstream. And you'll use your hands for some of those big rocks and kind of clean around. Nice. Some of these animals that live on these rocks they kind of stay there to feed, so they don't come off loosely. So you have to use a little, little bit of uh, scrubbing power to get them off. Oh, we've already caught something here. We have a crayfish. We'll give you a close look in just a minute. So once they have finished doing the sample, doing the creek boogie, they are going to rinse that sample into a bucket so that we can sort through it later. Do you have a salamander? Yay! Alright, so now we're taking our second type of sample and this is our pool system. And with this we are looking for decomposed leaves and wood that other animals will live in. So we're using a D-net this time. You can also use your hands to be able to take the sample and we're just trying to loosen any of that debris and we're going to put it straight into the bucket. And we would do this sample three different times in three different pools. All right, now the final part. This is the fun part. We're going to sort to find out what is living in the creek. So some of the tools you might need it's helpful to have some kind of tray. These are just like kitchen drawer liners. Um, an ice cube tray to help sort your samples. You can use a magnifying glass because some of these animals are pretty small, so it's helpful to have something to make them a little bigger. A spoon and some tweezers to help pick up the sample. Most of these things are fine to pick up by hand. So what are these critters or bugs that are in our water? Well, they are called macroinvertebrates. Macro meaning they're large enough to see with our eyes, and invertebrate, meaning they don't have a backbone. So this can be an insect larva, it could be a worm, a mollusk like a clam, a snail, or a crayfish that you may find in the water. If you visit the Georgia Adopt-A-Stream website, you can find a field guide of different macroinvertebrates that live in our Georgia waters. You can find examples of stoneflies and caddisflies, so all of these are kind of grouped by their order. So you will also notice in the field guide that it'll have a measurement of their size, which is very helpful in identification. You can find what their tolerance level is, if they're sensitive to pollution or changes in the water, or if they're more tolerant. So an example of an insect larva that is very sensitive is a stonefly, and they have gills under their legs to be able to breathe. Another example of a sensitive organism would be a case building caddisfly. And these are really cool little critters because they can build a case out of materials in the water, such as little sticks, rocks, or leaves. And they often don't look like a living thing until their head pops out, which can be a little surprise sometimes. Things that are somewhat sensitive, like a crane fly or a scud, can be found in water that is healthy, but maybe a little warmer, doesn't move quite as much. The oxygen levels may be a little lower than they are for the sensitive organisms. The tolerant organisms, such as a worm or a leech 
or a midge fly larva, also known as a bloodworm because of their often bright red color, they can live just about anywhere. They can tolerate poor conditions. Um, many times these can breathe through oxygen uh, in the air rather than through gills. All right, and now we have finished our sampling and our sorting, and we have our collection here in these ice trays so we can kind of see the individuals that were there. Now you might wonder why we did this. So by taking these stream samples, we can actually learn what lives in the creek, but it also can help us to understand the water quality of the creek by what we find. So by Georgia Adopt a Stream standards, we would look and we could do a grading scale to find out how healthy our creek is. Now we didn't take a complete sample today, so I can't tell you a grade of this creek. We only took two of the seven samples that we would normally take. So we can't really get a good idea without taking all of the complete samples. But we, we did find some animals that are in the sensitive category. We found some that are in the somewhat sensitive and we found some in the tolerance. So that's always good when you can find a variety of animals in the creek and especially if they're in the different levels. So that can tell us a little bit about the water quality that is there.